Hello, I'm Rebecca the Maths Lady. I'm an expert in maths education and I've just completed five years working on a project with many very expert primary maths teachers trying to capture the essence of what the, it is that they know and do. And welcome to my YouTube channel where I'm trying to free share the results of that, um, that, that work. So this is series one, episode one. Series one is all about what we call reception class in England. Children are four when they start reception class and some of them are still four when they finish it. So in this episode, I'm gonna set out the context for what I'm gonna say during these ser this series so that you can judge whether or not this is for you. It may not be for you. Um, one thing is when people find, get really good at their teaching, they want to share it with everyone, but it doesn't always transfer and translate. So this episode is to help you get your bearings and work out whether or not this is a series you should be watching. And if so, what it is you're likely to get from it. So part one of our context, in England, we have this curriculum that shoves content very, very young. So in reception class, children are expected to become fluent with the numbers to 20. And in the next year, what we call year one, when they're five, they will be going on to study the numbers to 100. Now, nobody thinks that's a good idea. It doesn't recommend it in the research. And I'll explain why later in this episode. But it is where we are in England. And this series is, uh, is to help the teachers who are stuck with that reality because it's really hard to teach children who are that young hard maths well. Um, so you need to be really highly skilled and we've been trying to capture what it is that teachers who do succeed with this enormous challenge know and do and I, I hope you're going to find it useful. But if you teach in a country where they are sensible with their national curriculum and start formal education at the age of seven or nearly seven, then you're in a much better position and you won't need a lot of the insights in this series. You might find it interesting, but please don't change your curriculum to match ours. No. Uh, <laughs> so, question two, so why, don't, why am I not starting with children who are younger than four? And that is because it's usually in reception class in England when children are four that you've got all the children in front of you. And unless all your children have come from your own nursery, it's unlikely you can take anything for granted. Uh, maybe you know the local nurseries well, really well, all the children have been there, then you don't need to start at the beginning, which is what we're gonna do. But most reception class teachers, teachers of four-year-olds, need to be able to go to the very beginning, and it seems the right place to start with teaching you how to do that. Um, another question, do I prefer teacher-led teaching or continuous provision where children work freely on activities that they learn in those contexts? I don't take a judgment on that. What I profoundly believe is that what matters is what's in the head of the teacher, how well they understand the learning journeys children need to take, how well they understand the conceptual difficulties that children will be struggling with, and how confident they are, how many strings to their bow they've got in knowing how to get children through those barriers that they're likely to face and ensure they've got the grounding they need to flourish and thrive with that with numbers so it doesn't matter if your school says you've got to teach from the front you will find this useful if you're in a place where continuous provision is the norm the same is true so that doesn't matter so having listened to that if you feel this series is for you please subscribe to the channel um, it's really easy to assume you'll be able to find these videos again and that's just not always true. It's really important to subscribe and you'll get updates um, in your YouTube when new videos are launched. 
Um, but mainly you'll be able to find it again because you'll be able to go to your subscriptions and find the channel. So please do that. Please subscribe. Please give us a like. And let's get started understanding the mind of the four year old child. And this gets the heart of why most countries start their national curriculums at the age of seven. Because by the age of seven, children's cerebral, their frontal cortexes have developed, their brains have developed so that they can retain and manipulate information. Um, and they've generally, they can generally be taught something one day and you've got a good, there's a good chance that they'll remember it the next day. When children are four, their brains are not that well developed. They can't, most children can't work in the abstract. Their attention is awful. They're constantly losing the thread of what you're saying if you're trying to direct them. Their mind is going its own direction. They're paying attention to anything and everything and they're just, you constantly have to keep bringing them back to you. And it's really difficult for them to do what I'm asking you to do now and just follow a, follow a line of um, speech and make sense of it. And they don't retain information overnight in the same way that they will when they're seven. So we've tried to import teaching techniques from countries where um, children don't start their formal maths education until they're seven and use those techniques when they're four. And they simply don't work very well but for those very real biological reasons. So what methods do work? Well, the grandmother, the godmother of understanding all this was a lady called Maria Montessori, who was profoundly observational, paid huge attention to what young children were understanding and what teaching methods were working. Um, and she developed Montessori education. I've got one of the class teaching files here. Um, and it was really about multi-sensorial, completely immersive educational experiences. Because obviously, four-year-olds do learn a great deal. They just don't learn in exactly the same ways that older children learn. They love experiences where their whole imagination is captured in the moment. They're totally immersed in what they're doing. And it's commanding all of their senses to engage with it. So there are various types of teaching which have gone on to understand the same thing. There's Cuisinier, there is um, Numicon, there's Maths Makes Sense, working with apparatus that's multisensorial. I'm not going to teach you those methods because they are really difficult to teach and they're completely immersive. If you're doing that method, you're not doing other methods. And we found that doesn't it's not very resilient in classrooms. It tends not to stick. You have got to keep training your teachers. So what I teach you in this series understands what all those experts were saying. I've got, um, you know, it understands what Vygotsky was saying as well about early years education. But I try to always work with stuff you're likely to have lying around. So any old stuff in the classroom, fingers, uh, egg boxes, just to show you how you can do things that really work in the most simplest way possible. But not all elements of, recept of teaching to four-year-olds are best done in that way. All logical maths is best done in that way, but not all maths is logical. Some of it is quite arbitrary. When you're learning the naming of numbers, um, so there's a, I think it's a micro light going over. Just give that a moment. When you're learning the naming of numbers, it's not logical. Just because two follows one doesn't mean that the next th number is going to be called three. How can you guess that? It's got to be rote learned. So that needs to be done differently. We need to understand that children find rote learning much harder when they're four because they don't retain information day to day. And so when you want them to rote learn, those what it is that you're trying to get them to capture must be built into daily routines so that they do it 
again and again and again and again and just till they just profoundly know it. So there's some of that in here too. So all of that leads to a plan for reception class. Um, this plan is a page per term guide. It's there for you to hack about and change. Um, it's in on Facebook in the expert primary maths teacher planning group if you want to download it. You don't have to use this plan. It's just there as an aid and you get a feel for how far we are through explaining and understanding everything that's in that year. Um, so this has been episode one. Um, it's been about the essence of how I'm going to explain how to teach four year olds. And if you feel it's for you, great, <laughs> really pleased. Episode two is, please stay with us for episode two, which is going to be about how you assess children when they first come to you. How you make sure they're ready to learn maths, the basics you need to put in place, what it is precisely that they need to know to thrive during um, reception class when they're four years old and how you intervene if children haven't got those basics in place. So before you go, please leave me a comment. It's really strange for me working to camera because I'm used to working with people and encouraging them to unpack their thinking and share their experiences with me all the time. I would love to know what you're thinking and what you have to say. Please, please leave a comment. Please, if you think this series is going to be useful, share it into Facebook groups or any social media groups that you think will be interested so that you can chat about it there with other people who share your interests. Please message your friends and send them a link to this series if you think it'll be useful to them. Check you've subscribed so you can find this channel again if you want it and please give us a like to boost the video. I'm Rebecca the Maths Lady, here to help you love your teaching. Thanks for watching, I hope to see you again soon.